Uh, in the meantime, if I could get your thoughts about the evolution of the training landscape, right? Because, of course, we know that the cybersecurity landscape, the threat landscape is constantly evolving. It's very complex, right? Um, we're talking about, you know, from 20 years ago where you have a fixed parameter to one that is dynamic, uh, nation-state actors to, you know, ransom as a service kind of uh, malware, IT type of uh, cybersecurity evolving into OT, emerging or converging into OT. So there's a lot of... Uh, uh, changes happening on the cybersecurity side, and of course that means that there's uh, evolution on the cyber defense side. But how does that impact training? So I think uh, our main focus is first help our trainees understand how the attacker point of view looks like, and this is how we specifically build our training for. So we start with building and giving them strong foundation about IT uh, in general. Then we will jump to the understanding how the attacker think, how the advanced attacks looks like, for example, bypassing EDR, evading SIM solution, all those kind of things. And then eventually they will cover, of course, more the defensive area, because we believe that in order to be a good defender, you must understand how the attacker will think and how it will compromise your network. Yeah, so talking about how to understand how the attackers think, right? So we're talking about skill sets that potentially means that a, a sort of a, a understanding of psychology in order to understand the motivations. And then, you, of course, you also talk about uh, touch on technical skill set. So there's quite a range of different types of skill sets. And of course, uh, when it comes to uh, gathering threat intelligence and the ability to detect anomalies, then you talk about, you know, uh, ability to have a... a analytical mindset as well, and ability to absorb huge information, data sets, right? And then shift up the uh, ones that are uh, suspicious looking. And then, so there's quite a different types of range uh, of skill sets. So what you're saying is that uh, you provide the trainees with foundation in technical skill set, and then you also provide them with different types of soft skill set as well. Yes, yes, and, and I think on top of that, what is, what we saw that is lacking with some professionals that we interview even to hire for Dart or for Red Alpha was the fact that they didn't truly really understand how the network built. And then they do and they do incident response, but they never build exchange server in their life. They don't un okay. truly understand active directory. Mm -hmm. This is for us, we believe that the main focus should also be from starting building strong foundation f at the candidate side. So they need to how to, they need to know how to do troubleshooting properly. Okay. They need to understand networking. They need to understand. Po they, they need to know how to write code, of course, okay. and understand deeply operation system. And then they could uh, later on be a good cybersecurity professional when we add on the later the more I would say intermediate skills such as uh, network PT, red team. Uh, Malware analysis, incident response handling, etc. Okay, okay, so um, of course, and you ha bring with you also a range of international experience, okay. given that you have been in the industry for what close to now twenty years, if I may say so. Uh, uh, yeah. Not just in Singapore, but of course in your home country, Israel yes. as well. So yeah. I was uh, hoping that you are able to share. You know, when we talk about Israel, right, and cybersecurity, many people say, "Wow, you know, it's one of the." strongest if not oh, the strongest in the world in terms of uh, training cybersecurity talent so what are the sort of uh, lessons we can take from israel in terms of training cybersecurity so, talent so, so i think one of the things that we took in, in red alpha was that we look about the idi uh, approach the israel defense force intelligence mm -hmm. uh, where they get a large pool of people in the age of 18 right so some of them are super bright evaluate them, assess them, and then in the shortest time, make them to be operational in cybersecurity. And then after five years in the industry, in, in the army, they became the best in the world, mm -hmm. as you said, as Israel yes, is right. good. And the reason for that is because the army knows for, for choosing people with the right aptitude. Mm. I think the main game here is how to choose the candidate with the right aptitude mm -hmm. for cybersecurity and for IT professional. Sometimes, and this is something unique phenomena that we saw here in Singapore, that people are coming to Red Alpha trying to accept and they fail during the process. And then they go and they pay for boot camp, a lot of money, other boot camps from other vendors. And then they come back and try to accept again for Red Alpha. But unfortunately, they still cannot pass the bar. 
And sometimes they complain and say, well, we spent so money on this and that mm -hmm. course, we took it for six months and you still didn't accept it. And they would say, yes, because we look about potential, right? So if you have potential, then maybe uh, you can, uh, uh, that may, it might be suitable for Red Alpha, but it might be you have to take a different path in order to fulfill it. Uh, so we don't sell promises in that sense. So